everyone, welcome back to our coverage of CES 2025. This is day three, and let me tell you, the sheer amount of cool stuff here is absolutely bonkers. I've been trying to keep track of everything, from crazy AI-enabled home gadgets to mind-blowing car prototypes, plus a ton of innovative ways technology is creeping into every corner of our lives. So get comfy, because we've got a lot to talk about. In this recap, I'm combining everything I've seen and heard on the show floor, from the biggest car reveals to the smallest, quirkiest gadgets you never knew you needed. Let's get started. First off, I have to give a shout out to the CES opening remarks and all the big speeches on day three. Gary Shapiro, the CEO of the Consumer Technology Association, CTA, was talking about the theme, collaboration is key. He also reminded everyone that CTA is celebrating a huge milestone, a hundred years in operation, and teased his new book, Pivot or Die, which basically underscores how businesses either adapt to new technologies or risk being left behind. Another big name at CES was Martin Lundstedt, the president and CEO of Volvo Group, who delivered a keynote emphasizing how sustainable transport, especially electrification, binds societies together. Now, speaking of transport, I've got to mention the big unveiling from Sony and Honda, the Afila EV. Yes, that's spelled A-F-E-E-L-A. We first heard about it last year, but now we got a closer look. The Afila collaboration is aiming for an EV that can do up to 300 miles of range, features advanced LiDAR sensors, and has an interior that feels ultra futuristic, complete with a new Dolby Atmos surround sound system, multiple screens, and even an option to display messages, like happy birthday, on the car's front hood. Apparently it starts around $90,000, so not exactly budget freely, but the tech inside is super intriguing. Another neat tidbit is that the in-car assistant is powered by ChatGPT 4.0. That means you can literally ask your car, hey, how's traffic? Or what's the quickest route to that new coffee shop? And get a semi-conversational response, albeit the demo was a bit choppy on the show floor. Still, the idea is definitely forward thinking. While we're on the Honda train, they also showed off some rather unique EV prototypes the Series Zero Saloon and an SUV concept. They look uh, out there with a distinct, edgy design vibe that might remind you a bit of the Tesla Cybertruck ethos. Very angular, very futuristic. Honda's new guiding principle for these designs is thin, light, and wise, which basically means they're aiming for more elegant, lighter EVs in 2026. We'll see how that pans out, but the concept versions at CES were definitely conversation starters. Let's stick with vehicles for a minute. BMW wowed everyone with the next-gen panoramic iDrive, a full-mint head-up display that stretches across the entire windshield. It's going into their electric Noya Classe lineup. It can show you everything from your speed to your navigation to AI-driven suggestions. This might mean physical buttons are going away, though. Meanwhile, Delta Airlines' Ed Bastian took over the sphere for a keynote about how AI and improved connectivity will revolutionize travel. They're rolling out Delta Concierge, an AI-driven voice assistant on their Fly Delta app, and also partnering with Uber so travelers can earn miles on rides. The entire keynote at the sphere included immersive visuals of planes taking off. Talk about over the top, but Hey, it's CES. Now, let's jump to home tech, because there was no shortage of that on day three. One of the biggest showstoppers was the truly wireless displaced TV. No wires at all, not even a power cord. It runs on battery power and can apparently attach itself to your wall via an active suction system. The TV uses OLED panels and can be mounted in under 10 seconds. Even better, the suction system is clever enough that if the battery gets low, it releases an adhesive for a slow, controlled descent so it won't just crash down. Prices are hefty, in the multiple thousands, but this is the kind of futuristic gear that makes CES so fun. In a similar wow category, we've got Pocketbook's Ink Poster. Think of this as a giant e-ink frame for digital art, so you can swap out your wall art on a whim, and it looks more like real ink on paper than a bright display. There are three different sizes. The small one is $599, and it goes all the way up to a bigger piece that climbs into four-figure territory. Definitely not cheap, 
but it draws minimal power and for digital art lovers, it's pretty neat. Next up is all the cooking and food tech gear. We saw a wild concept from Kara Water called the Kara Pod, which literally brews coffee, by condensing moisture from the air. Think a built-in dehumidifier that uses that water to make your morning espresso. The folks behind it promise it's totally safe, though some testers said the flavor might taste a bit unique. Meanwhile, iGulu introduced a Keurig for craft beer. You pop in the ingredients, push a button, and let the machine handle the messy stuff like fermentation. For the folks more into gardening, Gardein's hydroponic indoor garden system lets you grow herbs and veggies with minimal fuss. Lights and watering are automated. If you want something even more outdoorsy, we saw Wonder Blocks from the Bird Buddy team. They're stackable units to attract wildlife, plus a new pedal solar-powered camera to record all your yard's visitors. But maybe you want something more functional for the yard, like avoiding the hassle of mowing or shoveling. Enter Yarbo, the do-it-all yard robot. Yarbo is modular, to so you can attach a snowblower module, a leaf blower, or a lawnmower function. A dream for those of us who hate yard chores, right? Segway also had their new Navimo, sometimes spelled A-I-M-E, which is a quieter, simpler robotic lawnmower. So if you're in the market for robot yard care, CES Day 3 definitely had you covered. On the home security front, Swan showed off the Xtreme 4K camera. It's an AI-driven security camera that can differentiate between friend and foe, even using a built-in assistant to verbally greet visitors or scare off intruders. Another security gadget is TCL's new Smart Lock with palm vein recognition. You walk up, hover your palm, and the door unlocks by reading your unique vein patterns. We also saw the BirdFi Feeder 2 from NetView's BirdFi line, which is a bird feeder with a built-in camera, complete with three lens array so you can watch your feathered friends from multiple angles. And in a somewhat similar vein, Realize Birdie Smart Bird Bath claims to keep the water temperature perfect and automatically clean itself. Who knew bird baths could become high-tech? Let's shift gears and talk about smaller AI gadgets. Took introduced TAP, an AI-enhanced touchscreen light switch that can manage energy usage and control home automation. WeWalk debuted an AI-powered smart cane perfect for the visually impaired. It detects obstacles, syncs with navigation apps, and can give turn-by-turn -turn directions with voice feedback. Elephant Robotics has this adorable meta panda AI, which is basically a super realistic robotic panda covered in artificial wool that uses AI to recognize language and emotions. And the Jethro V1 AI mouse from Shenzhen ZFF. Technology is a computer mouse with built-in voice-to-text and real-time translation, plus it can operate offline, which is awesome for privacy. A big highlight for audio folks, Kanto had two major reveals. One is the Kanto Renz, a new set of desktop speakers that look absolutely gorgeous in bright orange. And then on day three, they also teased the Kanto UKI bookshelf speakers. They're small, colorful, and rumored to cost around $199, but we can't buy them just yet. They're prototypes set for the second half of 2025. If they're anything like Kanto's other speakers, they should be big on style and solid on sound. Sticking with audio, Ankyo showcased the Creator Series, the GX10DB and GX30 Arc powered monitors. They're jam-packed with connectivity from Bluetooth to USB-C, optical, HDMI, and more. Meanwhile, at the high-end side, Ankyo also revealed the Icon Hi-Fi series, which includes a P80 network preamplifier, M80 power amplifier, and a 50 integrated amp. These are made for hardcore audiophiles who want top-notch sound and are willing to pay for it. Gamers, fear not, I didn't forget you. Razer introduced the Blade 16, rocking the all-new NVIDIA RTX 5090 GPU and an AMD AI9HX370 CPU. That thing is a beast, complete with a 240 hertz OLED display and a new vapor chamber for cooling. Not to be outdone, Asus unveiled the latest ROG Strix SCAR laptops, including a 16-inch and 18-inch version with up to 2.5K mini LED screens, next-gen Intel and NVIDIA GPUs, and up to 64 GB of RAM. If you've been craving over-the-top performance, either one of these is sure to handle your favorite games for years to come. More in the realm of displays, uh, Lenovo unveiled the ThinkBook Plus Gen 6 
rollable laptop, a screen that literally rolls up to expand from 14 inches to 16.7 inches with a button. We don't have a price, but it's rumored to land later this year with an Intel Core Ultra 200V CPU, up to 32 GB RAM and one TB SSD. That's some real futuristic stuff right there. We also got some hype in TVs. Panasonic showcased the Z95B OLED, which they claim is their brightest and most advanced OLED yet, thanks to a fancy new panel stack and an enhanced cooling system. Early impressions are that it's stepping up the game, even above Panasonic's previous Zin 95A. Another big name, Nanoleaf, displayed the 4D V2, a color-changing light strip that syncs with your TV. It's super flexible and easy to mount, no corner brackets needed, just stick it around the TV edges. Think of it like an alternative to Philips Amblite. Meanwhile, we can't forget the displaced TV I mentioned earlier, or the mention that Samsung teased this 95F, an ultra-bright QD OLED. They also bragged about their improved home AI integration with Bixby, plus new ways to automatically optimize pictures based on lighting conditions. And let's circle back briefly to robots and exoskeletons. There was a snippet about Hypershell from an earlier mention. It's this wearable contraption that might let you run faster or walk with less fatigue, but the show floor demo left me with more questions than answers. Also interesting was the Arzen Zip, the world's first trifold ultra portable projector that can fold up to the size of a deck of cards, or so it seemed. It's built for road trips or camping with a 90 minute battery and built in gimbal stand. So if you wanna watch Netflix on the side of your tent, that might be perfect. And last, but definitely not least, let's take a moment to highlight some absolutely random but brilliant standouts that caught our attention. For starters, the GEM Global booth featured an impressive range of Energizer-branded smart home tech, including cameras, lighting, thermostats, electrified interfaces, and more. It's a lineup that truly shows how everyday essentials are getting a smart upgrade. Then we noticed a new wave of smart feeders making their mark, particularly the BirdFi Feeder 2 Duo, which stands out with its triple lens camera designed to capture birds from every possible angle. A bird watcher's dream come true. Speaking of smart innovations, there's a brand called Tap from Tuke that deserves a mention. It's an AI light switch that not only handles power usage efficiently, but does so with both onboard and cloud-based neurosigmolic AI, adding a whole new layer to how we manage energy at home. And lastly, the recurring pivot or die references from Gary Shapiro really drove home a key theme of the event. If you don't adapt to new tech, you risk being left behind. Honestly, it feels like the perfect motto for CES in 2025. All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for tagging along on this uh, fairly massive day three recap. If you got this far, you must be just as obsessed with all these gadgets as we are. Don't forget to drop any questions or your favorite highlight from today's coverage in the comments. Until next time, remember, if something can be AI powered, it probably will be sooner rather than later.